BizMap PTBO Peterborough's Business Vlog. Each episode creates a business map to your success. We will introduce you to people and places in our city who will help you make it happen. Showcasing why PTBO is the place to live, play, and prosper. Hi, and welcome back to BizMap PTBO. We'd like to take this opportunity and introduce you to some family-run businesses. How do you know when you're talking to someone if they're your dad or if they're your boss? How do you know when you're talking to that person? Are they, are they your grandfather or are they board of the director? So how do you differentiate? And then the knowledge that every single person in that family has about that industry is unparalleled to anyone that might just start working at a company. Family-run businesses are rich in knowledge, rich in history. I have fallen in love with them, and I know you will too. And we have partnered with two women who you're going to also meet in this series who run an association for Kawartha family-run businesses. So I'm looking forward to this series on family-run businesses. I know you'll enjoy it as well. Kawartha Family Business Group has been around for about 10 years. Actually, we're in our 10th year, which is really exciting. And myself and my business partner, Jane Brazier, have been involved with it since day one. We sat around and decided that there was a need for an organization that could focus exclusively on family businesses. And out of those discussions was born Kawartha Family Business Group. The reason someone would join the organization is really about content and the opportunity to network with other family businesses. Succession planning is a critical component to a family business. It's, it's really the, the framework in which businesses can transfer their wealth and their legacy from one generation to the next. So looking at succession planning is a core component to our programming. It's challenging sometimes because we have to come at it different ways so that we're not just repeating ourselves. But we do that by bringing in uh, different guest speakers who uh, look at sort of the social side of succession planning, the, the feelings, the dynamics between family members. And then we'll bring in business advisors who might look at it more pragmatically through evaluating your business, freezing shares, more the methodology involved in going through that process. Our meetings are set up a little bit differently from time to time. We try to mix them up a little bit. So our meetings always open with Family Business Spotlight, which is an opportunity for a local business, most of the time members, who can come in and share their story. And it's probably one of the highlights of our events. It gives people an opportunity to hear about a business that they might not know otherwise, other than perhaps a sign on a building. It, it brings that family to life. But we've had some great guest speakers. We've, we've been very lucky and people have been very generous with their time. So it, it's, there's been a really good variety. I think family businesses are unique because they're family. And, and it sounds obvious, but in that statement, there's a lot of nuances that go along with that. Businesses, family businesses have to be successful. They have to have good foundations as any business does. But on top of that, they have to work through the dynamics of family members. So you know, a family business needs good human resource policies. They need to be able to hire fairly, just like any other business does. But for a family business, sometimes those policies can impact a daughter, a niece, a son, a wife. And uh, therein lies the issues because people go home at the end of the day and their family but they're still trying to work together and work through all of those issues. There was one event that was really interesting and it was more of a story and it goes back to Roseanne Longo. And we talk about family and, and one of the messages we get is that sometimes they're harder on their kids than they are on their employees. Roseanne Longo shared a story where her son is now working at the grocery store. And I think her son is probably about 16. And he came in thinking that perhaps he might be an assistant manager. And Roseanne reminded him that he would start his job at the grocery store bringing in grocery carts, just like everyone else did. And I thought that, was, that really framed a great approach to bringing in that next generation and making sure they understand the business from the ground up. Our organization is funded 
by memberships from our family members, but certainly we wouldn't exist without the financial support from our sponsors. And our sponsors, many of them have been with us from, from day one. So our sponsors, if I just go down the list, we've got LLF Lawyers, Nexacom, Terry Windrum, BDO, RBC, and part-time CFO. And so they all bring really great uh, support to the organization, as I've talked about financial support, but they also support us with their time and talent, access to great guest speakers, and so they really help uh, shore up the organization. So what's really exciting this year is for our 10th anniversary, we've been working with the DBIA, and we want to bring our members back to downtown, because in the downtown core, a hundred years ago, this is where Peterborough's industry grew. We had the canoe making and, and industry down here. And so where we have retail and hospitality happening downtown, a hundred years ago, we made things here. And we wanted to bring our members back down to where it all began. Most, if not all of those businesses were family businesses. Our city, our economy was really born from family businesses. So we thought after, you know, on our 10th year anniversary, we could bring people back here, do a bit of a walking tour to tell some stories about family businesses that have been, family businesses that still exist, and then also to celebrate the, the renaissance of downtown. And the renaissance that's happening here, again, has really been supported by family businesses. And so it's just a lovely way to bring it all together and to celebrate 10 years of Kortha Family Business Group. That event will be happening in May. We wanted to make sure it wasn't too cold and we're working on the date and some of the details with DBIA. So I'd like to thank BizMap. It's been a lot of fun working with, with everyone. It's been great to involve our members with the event as well. If anyone's interested in learning more about Kortha Family Business Group, you can check out our website at uh, kfbg.ca. If you'd like to come to a meeting, you'd be more than welcome to come as our guest. Give it a try, see if it, see if it fits, see if you see some value, and then become a member. My name is Scott Stewart. I'm president and co-owner of G. Stewart Travel Services Limited. We are a full service travel agency with multiple locations in the province of Ontario. We hold both retail and wholesale licenses for our tour department as well. So we are in our 43rd year of business, second generation. Father started the business in 1974. I joined the firm in 1986, purchased in 1994, and my sister became our partner in 2000. When we've expanded, we've gone to organizations like Community Futures, where we've been able to design and, and create new technology to assist us at the airport. It was software that didn't exist, so we were able to do a joint venture with them and create a whole new platform. I think the biggest business decision that was made, we joined with a large worldwide corporation called Carlson Wagen Lee Travel, the largest management travel company in the world. We are still part of that franchise group of travel agencies worldwide. Unique qualities in our family business. I think the qualities that are most important to my sister and I, our ability to communicate, our ability to trust, extremely approachable. We constantly ensure that it, it's not just a place where everybody just comes to work. It, it's a place where when you come, it's a safe environment. And I know that it's one of the reasons that we've been able to grow to almost 70 employees with well over 30 locations in the province of Ontario. When we were celebrating our 40th anniversary in family business, we wanted to come up with some really crazy out there, unbelievable, what can we do to celebrate our 40 years in family business? Because very rarely can that happen, especially being able to do successful transition. We came up with the idea, why don't we bring the first 737 aircraft into Peterborough, take 136 of our friends and clients and family, and we'll go to New York City for a weekend and we'll celebrate our 40th anniversary. And, and we put it out to the community and it was such a success that it sold out in 24 hours. We had to put a second plane on. So for us, a huge rewarding aspect was 
We, uh, at a cocktail party in downtown Manhattan on this 32nd floor of an outdoor reception bar, we had 272 people from Peterborough, all friends, family, colleagues, clients, and we were celebrating our anniversary, which was, gosh, uh, something that we'll never forget. And, and clearly from that time, we realized that we put a business model together that actually works. One of the biggest hardships is probably the ability to grow and adapt as fast as the business environment is changing. The biggest thing for us is embracing the different technologies, embracing that your clients are much more knowledgeable than they used to be because of the internet. We agree with the internet. We don't compete against the online users. We're full service. We want people to feel that they've experienced a professional, knowledgeable, courteous, educated travel counselor. We call our counselors dream makers because that's really what we do. But the ability for us to ensure that we can stay current is we have to be smarter than the internet. When you have family and family business and, and everybody's got all their financial eggs in one basket, and if something was ever to go wrong, then everyone's livelihood truly could vanish overnight. Another con are those that don't do anything. And unfortunately, there are more of those than not. And it's one of the reasons why when a family business starts, the percentage of success on the second generation is less than half. And by the time the third generation comes, it's less than 20%. Now the pros, oh my gosh, I get to work with family every day. I think it's easy to brainstorm and make decisions because we are the decision makers. And I would say the number one thing that continues to drive me is the entrepreneurial spirit of a family business and being creative and not having to go through all that red tape in a corporate structure. It gives us the ability to dream as big as we want to dream as long as we figure out the way to get to that dream. It's all about risk and reward and, and you have to ensure yourself that you don't risk everything to try and hit one reward. We also call it calculated risk. So if something was to happen, what is the, out, the, the outfall of that and can we sustain if this one idea doesn't work? We do have a succession uh, platform, I would call it, for us to say, hey, we want to retire. The principle is there and, and it's based on the same principles that we used in the transition in our family to second generation. Our kids are still fairly young as well, so if it's a third generation that comes from family succession, I guess the building blocks are put in place, but we're a little premature to say whether or not that would actually happen. When it comes to advice in starting a family business, or any business for that matter, when you have a partner the very first thing you need to do is you have to have identified roles. I also believe that in any partnership or family business, there really does have to be a president. There has to be somebody leading the charge. Make sure you have an accountant, a lawyer, and a bank manager that can grow with you. I think the other thing too is that whether it's a partnership or a family business, you both have to be on the same page. And you have to have the same values. And you have to have the same understanding of where you want to take your company. We're a firm believer in having a mission statement. We're a firm believer of having all of the components in place. We strategize, we have business plans. We, you both need to be on the same page regardless of the partnership or if it's family business. And, and I guess the, the last thing I, I would say is that just because a share of the company may be offset, treat each other as equals. And therefore, you guys can make a heck of a lot more decisions on an expedited area or way because you're, you're already on the same mindset and, and everybody's got equal value. We are very proud of what we've accomplished. And as I said, when We've been able to continue to grow and keep a family dynamic with all of our employees. But when you walk into any of our offices, you're gonna know right off the bat that, oh my gosh, 
These people are knowledgeable, they're educated, they're professional. We've got those experts. We have those people that have been there. They're, they're knowledgeable, they've taken the courses, they've experienced, they've got huge amounts of knowledge, and it's important. The savvy traveler is much more educated than they used to be. We, as knowledgeable, professional dream makers, if we're not smarter than the internet, why would you want to come to a full service travel agency? It's hugely important for us. My name is John Cunningham. I am a licensed funeral director and I am the owner, president and managing funeral director of Community Alternative Funeral and Cremation Services here in Peterborough and Ash Burnham Funeral Home and Reception Centre here in Peterborough. We're opening another business which we hope to have open in December, Greenway Eco Crematorium. I have been a funeral director for 32 years, since 1985, but the Community Alternative Group of Companies has only been around since 2004. Starting in about the late 80s, the large American funeral corporations started buying up the little family-owned firms around Ontario, and at one point, most of the funeral homes in Peterborough were owned by large corporations. and they tend to have quite a focus on sales instead of service and I was hearing some complaints from from families about the cost of services and I knew that things could be offered at a lower cost but still maintain quality of services so I started Community Alternative with the idea that we would provide quality services for families in need at a significantly reduced cost well, I was very fortunate. My father was a banker. My mother was an accountant. Yeah, another cousin was an insurance person. So we had some good family resources. And then in Peterborough, I mean, I started without any business experience whatsoever. Greater Peterborough Area Economic Development Corporation was a huge help, as was Community Futures. And then once we got our business going, the Chamber of Commerce has just been phenomenal. There, there are qualities and values that I think that most businesses should have, and that's providing value for families in need. And I see value as a combination of excellent service at an excellent price. We do our best to operate as ethically as we can and at all times with families being our primary focus, doing what's right for them. There's always challenges, always, in business. And I would say in the past five years, probably the biggest challenge I've had was opening Ash Burnham Funeral Home. It was an extremely challenging project just because of the nature of 
the building that we bought. We had zoning issues, we had licensing issues, we had a new Provincial Funeral Services Act coming out all around the same time and it was quite a stressful time. I didn't used to have grey hair before that so it was, uh, it was uh, that was probably the most challenging time. The most rewarding moment is just almost every time we meet with families and they're experiencing one of the most difficult times in their lives and by the time it comes time to say goodbye to them we've, we've provided our services and they're just so grateful for what we've done. It's, it's more rewarding than anything knowing you've helped. The pros are that you get to make business decisions on your own. You, I don't have to check with head office down in the United States. I don't have to check with a, a board of directors. I get to decide what's best for our business and, and our families. I guess the cons are that there's no job security. We're only in business as long as people are willing to use what we offer. They can always call someone else. We're constantly trying to make sure that we're providing the best service we can at the best price. I'm just at the beginning stages. We got Ashburnham Funeral Home open about three or four years ago and it's just moving along nicely right now. We're just in the final stages of opening up our new ecologically friendly crematorium. But I'm, you know, getting a little long in the tooth. And while I have no immediate plans on retiring, I know that that day is coming sooner rather than, than later. So it's more involved than I initially thought. And I know that it's a good plan, takes several years to implement. So we're at the beginning stages. In a nutshell, my advice would be, if you're going into a business, be sure that you know that business inside out. Know everything about it. Constantly learn, never stop, never stop learning. If you're new to business, a solid business plan is essential. It really makes you examine your business, your plan, your marketing, your financing, everything. Get good advice from people you trust for the things that you don't know. I really didn't know a lot about business and financing and things like that, but I got some excellent advice, advice over, over the years. Things are going to cost twice as much as you expect. Don't spend money you don't have to spend because at the beginning it's going, it's going to be lean. Be prepared to take a minimal salary or, or in my case no salary for several years before you get things going. There are sacrifices to be made, but there's also rewards. I was at Trent University. I was taking geography, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I really didn't know. And my summer job had been as a water ski instructor and boat, boating director for National Council YMCA's. It was great. I thought I might work for the Y, but I wasn't sure. My father suggested that I consider being a funeral director. I thought, no way. I just couldn't see it. And he said, well, you know, it provides a modest living, but a fairly secure living. And that, well, I don't have any better options. So to get into college, you had to do 40 hours of unpaid observation at a funeral home. I went down there, and I'll tell you, within 30 minutes of walking through the door, my whole thinking about what a funeral director does and who he is or she is just did a 180. Once I saw it from the inside, I saw it in a whole new light and I thought this is something I would like to do. So became a funeral director, worked in Toronto. We moved, my wife's from Peterborough, we moved back here and thinking about most of the funeral homes being owned by big American corporations, it's just not me. It just wasn't me. And it, I got to the point where, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it my way and started out very small. Not that the city needed another funeral home. We, we were well serviced. We needed a different type of funeral home and that's where Community Alternative came in. We have two, soon to be three, successful businesses and I have three children. Not one of them is interested in being a funeral director and quite frankly I don't blame them. They've seen me working seven days a week seen me getting home at 11 o'clock at night 
being late to get home for Halloween. There are sacrifices when you own your own business. There really are. If you're not passionate about what your family does in their business, I would recommend don't do it. But if you're passionate, boy, there's, there's nothing better. So here I was, so I was a water ski instructor, and it was, it was just the best job in the world. I had lots of friends from high school. I loved music and going out and, and being with friends. And I just had this image of funeral directors as wearing a suit all the time, standing with a solemn look on their face, just dealing with death and sadness all the time. And I didn't see the job for what it really was. It is one of the most helping professions you can have. And I have always been attracted to things where you can help people, to make the world a better place, to, to relieve suffering in the world. That has always appealed to me. I walked into that funeral home as a, was in my early 20s, and these funeral directors quickly became just real people. They had a sense of humor, they had families, they had a very varied job. They were doing different things all day long, which really appealed to me. And they believed in what they were doing, that they were helping people, and they were. This makes sense and this is something I could do as a profession the rest of my life. Never once, ever, in my 32 years, have I said, I'd rather be doing something else. Never, it is just, a great profession for the right person. So just if we're, if we're speaking to people that might be considering starting their own business, boy, there's, um, there can be nothing more frustrating, but yet nothing more rewarding. And welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Family Run Business. We look forward to seeing you again at the next episode of Bismat PTBO.